Hello, uh, we continue our uh, solution of the Kurno game. As you might remember, last time we discussed a game where we have two airline companies, American Airlines and United Airlines, competing for uh, the business for flying passengers en route between Chicago and uh, Los Angeles, and the demand, total market demand, is given by 339 minus Q. The price is determined by that, and this is the equation for our demand curve. And we were able to draw our demand curve. And given this demand, we were able to find first the best response for American Airlines and United Airlines given by these equations. And uh, it's not difficult to see where this comes from, right? So we have the residual demand of American Airlines. And given this residual demand, uh, the, the marg uh, residual marginal revenue for American Airlines is this curve here. And uh, it's possible to find the intersection between the marginal cost and the residual marginal revenue of um, American Airlines. And the intersection point, at the intersection point, we call this point the Nash Equilibrium. This is where... Uh, our uh, best response curve implies given by this equation. We solve them together. We find 64 is our Nash equilibrium and drawing this nice picture we are able to see what's going on really. So when we have only one firm producing 64 um, and we have uh, our both firms producing 128 and the market price will be at um, to eleven two hundred and eleven dollars. Um, given these uh, best responses, it's actually possible to draw them on on a quantity space, quantity quantity space. So I have the output choices of American Airlines on my horizontal axis and the f the same quantities for United Airlines on my vertical axis. So given that the best response of American Airlines is given by this equation. I plot it here. This is the best response of American Airlines. And similar, it's also possible to make a similar drawing for United Airlines, and that would be the best response of United Airlines. Okay, so the intersection point is our Cournot equilibrium at 64, American Airlines produces 64 and United Airlines produces 64. Not only that, uh, it's possible to compare this point with perfect competition, right? In which both firms which produce would produce 96 units. Here on this picture, it would be that point, I believe. This is where the marginal cost curve meets the demand, total demand curve. So at this point, at, so this point here would be 192 knowing that we have two firms, they will each share the... So if these two firms acted like a per, uh, perfectly competitive firms, they would produce... They would both... Sorry, at this point, they would both produce 96 units. But this is not the case. In this example, in the Kurno game, we have both firms being oligopoly firms, and they will produce rather 64 each. If these firms were producing the uh, monopolistic output, which is 96, we would expect them both to act like a cartel, both reducing their output significantly, this much actually, and this point would be the cartel equilibrium. Okay? Alright, so, as we said, these are our Nash equilibrium. American Airlines and United Airlines decides to produce 64 units, the Nash equilibrium price is 211 and these are the profits of both firms so they both earn $4,000 each now in the final step I would like to go ahead and uh, compare uh, different market structures and based on the number of firms okay what is the output and the profits and the prices how do these change depending on the number of Firms and I've come up with this following uh, table. Okay, so it should be fairly easy uh, to see what's going on in this picture now. 
So when we have one firm, this is the monopoly case, right? So I will just, so let me do it here a little bit more space. Okay, so this is the case where we have a monopolist, monopoly. We have one firm, and when we have one firm, the market price will turn out to be $243 and the output of this monopolist will be 96 and the market output will be the same so we'll just multiply the number of firms by the how much each firm will produce and in this occasion the profit of the monopolist will be $9,216 and the, to the overall profit of the market is the same okay um, now in the, in, in the case of a duopoly we have two firms competing, right? And the market price drops to significantly to $211. And each firm produces 64 units, as we mentioned early on, 64 units in the case of a duopoly. And so the market output then is 2 times 64, which is 128, significantly higher than the monopolist would produce. And so each firm will earn $4,096 of profits, which would make a combined profit of $8,192. Uh, we can keep actually increasing the number of firms. For instance, in the case where we have three firms, um, it would be an oligopoly now. It, oligopoly. Okay. Uh, the market price will drop even further to $195 and each firm in fact will produce 48 units for a combined output of 144 units produced in the market and each firm will earn only $2,304 of profits for a combined profit of $6,912. Okay, and so on. It is possible to continue to increase the number of firms and see how uh, the price and the output will change depending on, on this choice. For instance, in the case where we have 100 firms, it should be so this should be kind of fairly close to perfect competition conditions, right? So perfect competition almost perfect competition and in this case it turns out that the market price uh, will be just uh, let me see this the market price will be one hundred and forty eight dollars and ninety cents one hundred forty eight dollars and ninety cents fairly cost them what the marginal cost is right one hundred and forty seven dollars so the firm is adding just two dollars of profit on top of it so each firm will produce one point nine units very very small amount so for a combined total output of 190 fairly close to what the perfect competitive solution would tell us right so it would tell us uh, 96 plus 96 196 192 we are very very close to the zero profit level and in this case each firm for every single unit we will earn 1.90 dollars of profit this is the price above the marginal cost, and so each firm should own, should earn around four dollars at the most. And knowing that we have one hundred firms, so the profit should be somewhere close to four hundred dollars. Uh, so this, with this, we will uh, we are ending the Kurno game, and next. I will be focusing on the Stackelberg game in which we will have a leader and a follower and we will see how uh, when the firms do not move simultaneously but rather they follow each other how do this affect the decisions of the companies so thank you for uh, staying with us and uh, we will continue our discussion with the Stackelberg equilibrium thank you bye bye